Blade II, the most influential film of the 2000s. Right into the action, this movie is all gas, no breaks. Has a completely different feel and tone from the previous film, straight from the jump. Guillermo del Toro's influence is felt immediately. It's taking itself a lot more seriously. After the first film making so much money, they realize it's not just a joke. What a cold open. Luke Goss immediately immerses you into the sickly vampire and then immediately tricks you. Instantly gets you intrigued into who slash what he is. Wow, with the little exposition, explain the situation and the setting. If we're comparing straight up opening monologues, Celine has Blade beaten by 50. 50 dub, 50 cent, whatever you want. She has him beaten. Real quick, I'd like to apologize for calling Blade immortal in the previous film. Thank you, Shonen Haikita. Hopefully I'm getting that right for bringing that to my attention. I don't know why i said that he ages like a mortal it was a pretty important scene in the film i can't promise mistakes won't happen in the future but if you call me out i will correct the mistake back to the video in the opening five minutes they already show you the improved cgi phenomenal work to be fair if someone could let me know what type of shot or how they achieve the shots where it was this slow motion almost video game like at 718 it is really jarring i don't know if it's because i've never seen the shot before or what i hate it and i love it it's weird blood lace coke is another great original vampire idea this film franchise has so many original takes on vampires and i love that they didn't just rewrite the old crap the first 10 minutes of screen time wesley snipes has hardly any dialogue just killing vampires and grunts and some special effects tossed in with the odd line of dialogue every three minutes or so i don't know why i love it i feel like it just fits the character a very very young norman reedus giving off Daryl vibes in 2000. What happened in Russia? A story we will never know. And a weird case of a successful failure. They got the sequel, but they did not follow the story. Court of Owls, is that you? I feel like that's a, a big Court of Owls ripoff there. Guillermo has some unorthodox shots in his playbook. The one shot in the sword fight where it almost becomes a straight video game, Street Fighter style. He cuts that into a crazy close-up zoom follow shot. Man has talent and balls. Those shots with the technology at hand in 2002, he's that guy. He woke up and he said, I'm that guy. I'm gonna do this shit. There is no way, there is no way the Vampire Nation, Vampire Authority, whatever you want to call them, sent a black vampire to carry Blade's message. Come on now. Assad, the black vampire carrier pigeon, says to Blade, there's something worse to you about the Reapers. How many vampires has Blade killed? Hundreds of thousands? There is no bigger threat to vampires to Blade except sunlight. Even sunlight probably hurts less than Blade. I love what 90s, 2000s films thought future technology would be like. They're always like slightly off, but still sniffing around. They're right there. Nomak and the Reapers must be an inspiration for the Strain TV show. They look identical. And how the Strigoi slash Reapers feed is the exact same. Ron Perlman was the perfect choice for this film. I feel like the presence of an actor of that caliber brought out the best of Wesley Snipes. Before Perlman arrives, it kind of feels like Wesley is throwing this performance in. I literally have a note that says Wesley Snipes is throwing this performance in. And when Reinhardt shows up, it feels like the film really starts. Their back and forth is the best part of this film. Ron Perlman actually kind of carries Wesley. The blood pack walked so the Avengers could run. The success of this film, a superhero team up, if you will, where you have a lot of side characters getting together and you are introducing a lot of characters at once but they're all pretty known to the people who know the comics the fact that nissa leonore varela is trying to give the impression that she hates blade so much they're either gonna fuck or fall in love by the end of this film mark my words tony curran tony curran what the fuck literally shocked me seeing him in this and playing a vampire too but so different from marcus i feel like they might have cast him from seeing him in this and this is what i mean by blade 2 being the most influential film of the 2000s you have tony curran that gets shown in this film and then he goes on to underworld and becomes marcus a huge star not a huge star but a great character in that franchise you have norman reedus as a side character in this and he becomes the main hit star in a historically watched tv show that's a cultural icon you don't have hellboy you don't have hellboy if ron Pearl Roman isn't seen in this film and this film wasn't so successful this film spawns so much but watching it now and seeing all the things that took from it the strain is one of my favorite tv shows and knowing that without blade 2 the strain wouldn't exist is mind-boggling 
Watching this scene, I can't get past the Strigar comparison. It's not even just the look, which is identical. From the eyes of the bald head, the pale, almost translucent skin, red darkened eye sockets, the makeup, the veins that you can see, it's all the same. The movement, how they sway down low to the ground and how they're moving, is so similar to the blind children that got turned. The fact that the Reapers are a goddamn virus strain, like what are we talking about here? Nomak is Quinlan, Damaskinos is the master, how do they keep getting away with this oh my fucking god i just researched who created the strain now if you know who created the strain already you've probably been screaming at me for the past two minutes or just turned off the video which i can respect Stupid. the creator of the strain who wrote the novels and made the tv show is Guillermo del Toro, the man who directed this film. Guillermo del Toro is the original actual top G. The man got gifted by Odin the opportunity to direct a Blade film. With that massive opportunity, it comes with tons of pressure and possibility of mass scrutiny. Also, could be the end of you directing films. Guillermo Sucalaminka del Toro. Hats off to the man for having the gargantuan testicles take a roll of the dice on his career to create something original, create something that he, in his heart, wanted to see come to life. Man, I have not watched much Wesley Snipes, but God, every single line of dialogue, it either feels so forced or almost cringe. It's cringe because he's putting on this act like, oh, I don't care about anything. And it's like, it's very obvious. Like it's, n it's not his true personality. Maybe his acting skills just aren't that talented, but he was like widely respected. He won awards for acting. I just, like, he just can't convince me. I don't know what it is. I understand now why two separate directors went the route of just using him as the face and martial arts stuntman, giving him the least amount of lines you could give to a main character and using the side characters as the dialogue movers and having them really truly be the main characters of the film. In these films, the villain is the main character. In the first one, it was Deacon Frost. In this one, it was Nomak. That's who the story really revolves around, and Blade is just killing them. A prime example that attractiveness is the ultimate trump card. In any career, in any career, any situation, it doesn't matter. If you're attractive, you can get farther than people that are less attractive than you. I did immediately guess that Damascino was a reaper or created the reapers and was playing Blade. But I thought it was because he wanted Blade to kill Nomak because it was like an experiment gone wrong. Which is like kind of the truth. The twist that he is creating a master race of vampires no longer inflicted with their weaknesses. Of course made from his own blood, so it's evil and weird. Every man wants a son is the true synopsis of this film. Man goes through extreme unimaginable measures to achieve the knowledge to create life in his own image. Life. Releasing August 13th, 2031 future sci-fi film i just gave you a script i just gave you a script hollywood take it or leave it i'll take 50 percent of profits that's my deal so take it or leave it hardball the scud norman reedus twist is one i did not see coming he played that amazingly that was good acting wesley snipe should have learned something from watching norman reedus act and he was probably like 20 years younger than them when they filmed this his laugh almost like he couldn't keep his act on anymore finally breaking was so amazing as soon as he laughed i knew how his personality shifts right after just dropping the facade and being his original self his true self is a great performance by norman reedus all these people so easily tricking blade trapping him in a position where he should be dead shows how stupid the character slash wesley snipes is in this adaptation it's ridiculous i know he's no reed richards or peter parker in the comics he should have enough street smarts not to get tricked by like five separate people who just recently entered or re-entered his life i might add why would he even be letting people into his life he doesn't need help he's a one-man army he can create his own weapons like we've seen in the first film and then him saying i've been on to you since they turned you like yeah okay for sure you did man that's why you let yourself get in this monumentally fucked up situation where they could have killed you and all your friends at any moment you could already be dead why in the fuck would you let yourself get in that situation in one of the next scenes why would blade be dying he had four medium to small size silver punctures we've seen him heal from worse like it was nothing what a horrible placement for that scene as well in the midst of the intense escape scene people make fun of modern day male film stars and their lack of ability to show advanced emotions well on camera bradley cooper james franco but chris 
focusing on music was definitely the correct pathway. Like this was middle school level fake crying. Almost like the scene was never on the script, wasn't a rewrite or added in. Just 20 seconds before rapping, the director said, why don't you try this? Let's see what that looks like. Wesley Snipes lying there dead, clearly alive and breathing. Get a stunt man that can hold their breath for fucking one minute so you could have a fucking, or mask the scene. Mask it where you just so bad. His chest is moving. He's like, no, man, you can't be gone. Did Wesley Snipes just hit a fucking suplex on a vampire? Did that just happen? Is this a WWE moment? And he didn't even like do anything after that. The suplex killed him. He killed a man. He not he didn't kill a man. He killed a vampire with a suplex, my G. Just like my daddy said before killing my mom. That's the line that probably got Perlman Hellboy. Only Ron Perlman can say that line, and I believe it. I believe that his dad said that before killing his mom. After a whole film of Blade and Reinhardt going back and forth, for their final fight to be that short is a little underwhelming. One thing that this film and the previous film just didn't have an answer to, and I hope they get fixed in Blade Trinity, but I'm not sure they will. They don't know how the counterpart or antagonist to Blade should fight Blade. In every situation, and I mean every situation, there is no outlier. Blade's opponent, some random vampire who probably got turned after living in an alley their whole life, is now able to keep up one-on-one -on -one with Blade, a martial arts master. Self-proclaimed, I might add. I don't know what gym he studied at. What gym did Blade study at? Can I talk to his sensei? I know Del Toro wanted to rip Nomax Stinger right from his head. Don't worry, you'll get to do it. On a much smaller scale, but you'll get to do it. And I would like to mention, I was right she fell in love with Blade at the end of the film. Don't ever question my premonition skills. You may question some of my facts. I may get stuff wrong. You may question my look. You may question your sexuality. But don't ever question my vampire movie premonition skills. I would have wanted the film to end on that scene where she's crying and the sunset if it wasn't a Blade film. In a Blade film, getting one last vamp kill is truly the only way to end it. This one was a little different, not focusing on the film so much as the cast and the massive effect this film had, bringing into the light a list of talented actors who became staples in separate established properties. And more importantly, the repercussions this film had on Hollywood. There is no Spider-Man without Blade. There is no MCU. There is no Underworld. There's no Disney+. Plus. All these things and more would not exist without these films and the success they had. I can't imagine a world where I never met Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker. Never fell in love with Kate Beckinsale Celine in her all-black latex. Never cried as Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man gave his life last holographic message i love you 3000 blade thank you for everything i love you 3000 blade too thank you for everything and thank you guys for watching if you made it this far in the video you might as well subscribe unfiltered uneducated manic stream of consciousness movie reviews every week see you next week peace Welcome bitches with the champagne champagne i'm the new light skin low wayne. low wayne you are the hunger the strain that feeds on us since time immemorial. But make no mistake, you're still a parasite. And we will flush you out and burn you <laughs> in another face, in other eyes. You will see me as you die. I love you 3,000.